What interesting creatures, you mused, as you observed the skittering monsters that were the hilly churls. It had been a beautiful spring day, and a sudden need for exploration, adventure, and knowledge had overcome you, like a wave of unknown conflicts. You had set up a small camp atop a valley in which the tribal monsters had built a small village. With a pair of binoculars, you're watching over the hilly churls, dealings, and dances, writing notes into a journal you carried with you. Just when you were seeing one of the primitive beating each other with a very dull-looking sword, from somewhere behind you, you heard footsteps approach you. Your ears twitched. They were too rhythmical to be of that of a hilly churl, and too loud and obvious for an ambush. Your eyes narrowed and you reached for the claymore on your back. The delusion that was skillfully placed on the back of your left glove, glowing with malicious intent. You turned with your blade drawn and were surprised by the person who was approaching you. He wore a white coat, had a small bag in his left hand, and a neutral expression. And who might you be? he asked, unfazed by your defensive stance. You gulped in embarrassment. I could ask you the same. He tilted his head. I will indulge you on that comment if you lower your weapon. You did as he said, ramming the claymore's tip into the soft dirt. For a few seconds, both of you just silently glared at each other. My name is Albedo, Chief Alchemist of Mondstadt and the Knights of Havonius. I have come here to study and maybe paint the local Hedichel population. You raised an eyebrow skeptically. And why would you do that? He shrugged. Before I answer that, mind answering my question. Also, I don't like to repeat myself, but... If you have forgotten it by now, I will excuse it. You sighed. <sighs> Don't treat me like a child. Shrugging, you took your Fatui mask from your belt and put it over your face. Oh, so a Fatui, he said in a neutral tone. I have come here to study the differences between Sneznayan Hilichrolds and Monstadian Hilichrolds. So far what I see is a decrease in intelligence over the ones in my homeland. The alchemist scratched over his chin. Interesting. I'd like to exchange more intelligence with you. Who knows? You might learn things you would not otherwise. Tickling your scientific curiosity, you growled before mumbling, Fine. Albedo took a step into your small camp. There was nothing more than an umbrella to shield from the sun, a lounger, a few books on a small wooden side table, and a few notebooks. He half jokingly. <laughs> this doesn't feel like a proper research base. You chuckled. <laughs> it's for observation. I do have a laboratory in the Goth Grand Hotel. Ah, oh, I see. Albedo smirked and sat down on the lounger next to you, placing the small pouch between his feet. While you had binoculars, he himself brought a spyglass. Quietly, the both of you kept watching over the local monster population. A small crowd had built around a lavatory, and you watched as it threw a tiny one over its hut. The crowd around the big fella broke out into loud clapping. You are surprisingly calm for Fatui, said Albedo. You glanced at him. He hasn't taken his spyglass down, probably just small talk. I guess. Usually they just blindly attack me. But considering you're a fellow scientist, I guess that also means you have common courtesy. You smiled softly and returned your attention to the hilly drills. Out of curiosity, how different are they from Shneshnaya? You thought for a moment. 
will be easier to just show him your research notes, you gave him the short version. Due to the weather in my home country, hilly trolls tend to be more aggressive. Since Schnezhnaya is always cold and snowy, agriculture is almost not present. While these creatures admittedly are just hunter-gatherers, this still means that they can eat berries and maintain them. Not in Schnezhnaya. Because of their high aggression, only the big and strong ones survive. Albedo chuckled darkly. <laughs> so in a way, this is a simple distraction rather than real science to you. Explain. You already seem to know everything. You have to amused. I would say it's a bit of both. You seem to already know everything. You have to amused. <laughs> I would say it's a bit of both. Besides, it's safer. Anyways, why are you here? Albedo sheathed his spyglass and proceeded to sit on the lounger with you again. He owned his mysterious pouch and revealed the metal flask. Admittedly, I'd like to observe the mating rituals of the hilly churls. So far, there is no documentation of their, um, fornication. He placed the flask on your side table next to the wine the two of you had been sharing the past hour. So, you're one of those scientists, you said in a mocking tone. Oh, I certainly am not. However, if we know how they mate, we may also be able to control the population. Let us assume the mating ritual takes roughly an hour. This would mean we could interrupt it. And if certain conditions are required for it to begin with, we can either give them these conditions or take them away. You smiled. <laughs> Interesting. Getting rid of a population by making intercourse too difficult to initiate. Hmm. Sounds like something the Fatui would do. You looked at the flask. How would this even work? By spiking the water supply. However, due to you being a colleague, it would be a shame to screw with your research data. You thanked him for that, and both of you returned to your observation. The hours passed, and while many would call this day a bore, the seemingly random and silly interactions of the villagers were worth the weight of nothing happening. That was until you were excitedly following an altercation between an axe-wielding Mildred Churl and a shield-wall Mildred Churl. Not wanting to take off your attention, for the outcome of this strange fight was too interesting, you simply reached over to the bottle of wine and opened it, and blindly filled your glass, noting that the bottle was empty now. Hey, remind me to pull out the second bottle when I'm done with my glass, you said. Mm-hmm, was the only response from Albedo. Slowly you put your glass to your lips, and gulp down the liquid. It tasted... strange. You slowly shifted your gaze. The small sip that was still in your glass was discolored. You narrowed your eyes and looked at the table. There stood your half-full wine bottle. Next to the... Oh no! Hmm? Something interesting I'm missing? I... I... I drank your... Albedo suppressed a chuckle as your body began to feel warm. Aphrodisiac! Albedo sheathed his spyglass and slowly approached you. You were shivering in fear as he sat down next to you, gently rubbing a hand over your back. What do I do now? You asked, panicking. Am I going to die? The alchemist looked at you with concern. Well, no. But in a few minutes, I'm sure you will stop caring about the hilly churls. Your lips quivered. This was not the time for dry sarcasm. What? No! 
He scratched his chin. We could purge it from your body. I have Ipecac in my lap. Maybe if we are fast enough. Please! You begged. Only taking your notes, both of you began to rush towards Mondstadt. However, it was only at the halfway point that your body began to feel hot, and your legs started to wobble. The sensitivity of your skin by now had increased tenfold, and the rubbing of your clothes against your wrecked body was painful. You groaned and whined on the ground like a horny pig. For only a split second, Abedo considered the possibility of leaving you there, and then collect you once this had passed. However, he understood the danger of an oversexed woman in the wilderness with filly trills and treasure hoarders running about. He simply could not allow this. Drool was running out of your mouth as he picked you up and threw you over his shoulder. He sped up his steps as he felt you run your hands over his back. He rushed past the guards at the city gate towards his laboratory and slapped open the door of his home. Sucrose, he barked into the room. His assistant had remained here for an experiment that was unrelated to his hilly study. She looked at him scared and blushing. I need you to get out for the rest of the day. I'm about to do some important... He paused. Um, research that I need to do with... Again, he paused. This test subject. He bit his lower lip before saying... She was... Poisoned by the heart's energy on Dragonspine. You whined and mumbled something, and Sucrose took the lie. Be careful, Master Abedo, she said before leaving. The alchemist sighed in relief and stepped over to his bed, lying you down on it. He turned and took a step away, scanning his shelves for the epicac. When a hand suddenly grabbed his legs, he looked down, only to see you. While he had been busy searching for the vomit-inducing medicine, you had undressed and quietly approached him on all fours. A horny grin on your face, pleading with your eyes. He looked towards the table, taking a pen. Ah, uh, we have all night, I assume, he said quietly. Might as well test how good my aphrodisiac really is. Abaido was about to grab a few papers, only to realize if he really was going to do this, he would probably not have time to take notes. But then he smiled, his hand petting over your head, making you moan in pleasure as your entire body had become an erogenous zone. He walked over to his bed, quickly kicking off his boots. I wonder, is my hypothesis of seven hours correct? Patiently he patted the place next to him, and obediently you climbed on his bed. Your horny mumbles almost sounding like words. However, without his permission, your hands instantly went to work on his clothes. He narrowed his eyes, wishing to remember every second of this. Your hands were shaking from your overflowing emotions, acting on pure instinct alone. He pushed you off of him, when you were about to tear into his coat to free his body. Smugly, he began undressing before you, taking care to just take long enough to increase your suffering, but not long enough to be painful. He playfully scratched his chin. I wonder how much equipment will survive this night, Abedo said as he looked at his research table. He highly doubted tonight would just be contained to his bed, and a small part of him hoped that that was the case. When the morning sun shined through the ruined lab, 
he was first to awake. You were sleeping next to him, your naked form covered only by a thin blanket. He couldn't help but smile. Despite the mess his home had turned into, he couldn't help but enjoy last night. Yawning, he stretched and looked at his clock before gently placing a hand over your forehead. Hmm, still pretty warm. You gasped in your sleep. Remnants still remain even after ten hours. He thought for a moment and then smiled devilishly. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if we were to share a flask. Just then you opened your eyes and jolted up. Scanning the room, you stared at the mess on the ground. And the stains. The horrible stains! Instantly you bowed your head, apologizing profusely. This had been your mistake. Your doing. With your carelessness, you had ruined Albedo's home. For a moment he looked at your crying form. He questioned himself. He never was in a situation like this before. But then he smiled. Dodging a few glass shards, he took a still intact wine glass and filled it with water before approaching you carefully. He offered you the water and you took it. Emptying it in seconds. Thanks, you mumbled. While he placed the now empty glass on the table, Albedo sat down next to you, gently putting an arm around your shoulder. His soft touch calmed you down, and the leftover hormones from your accident kicked in. But now your brain was stronger than your desires, at least for now. I'm sorry, you said again, and he smirked. It's okay. I didn't hate it. Y you didn't? He shrugged. But I forced myself on you. While the duration of these events was a slight miscalculation, it certainly was enjoyable. He gently plastered a kiss on your forehead. Come on, let's get you cleaned. With the grace of a newlywed husband, he picked you up and carried you into the bathroom. Using a pump, he filled the bathtub with water and soap before placing you into the lukewarm water. Then getting in himself. It was a bit cramped, but his soft body was like a pillow. His arms wrapped around your waist, and you shivered under his touches, your body still feeling very overstimulated. His lips brushed over the skin of your neck, giving you goosebumps. Biting your lower lip, you try to suppress your urges to enjoy this moment for all it's worth. 